This episode of Strange Love brought to you by Treasure Licious. Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Kaya. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to Strange Love After Hours. Woo-hoo! I'm joined. I'm Cami Chaos, and I'm joined as always by Doctor Normal. Hello. Woo! This Ow! week we have a lovely studio audience, Media oh Chick and Verso. Ow! And we're joined in studio by Betsy Richter. Hi there, and I promise I'll start drinking more. I've been told that that's been the request from the chat room. It's an important thing to do. I, I'll do my best. And um, we're joined via Skype by Rick Rosie. Hello. Hi, Rick. Hi. So, to get things underway, this isn't really the most after hours of after hours topics, but... But we do want to talk about it, because it's in the local blogosphere news, right? Yeah, it's in the local blogosphere. It's happening now. It's... Updates and movement and happenings. So, so, Betsy, why don't you tell me what happened to Orblogs? Well, yesterday, anybody who visited Orblogs at orblogs.com found a note from Paul Bosch that said, I've been doing this for five years. It's been a labor of love. I can't keep this going. The site has been suspended as of now. And the local blog community in Portland and beyond went nuts. And they said, oh, no, this can't be. What can we do here? And there's been this huge uproar of all sorts of people who wanted to lend effort and energy to try to see if there's a way to do an Orblox 2.0. Mm-hmm. So Rick st- launched this post yesterday to say, what can we do to save our blogs? And I know that I've been sending tons of email and, and uh, correspondence his way. He and I talked about this earlier tonight at Beer and Blog, and we hope we were pulling Rick in tonight to talk about where things stand now and what do we do next. So, so Rick, where do things stand now and what do we do next? Well, it's it was really an interesting. You know, I, I never expect these things to take on as much momentum as they do. Um, and you know, it was really just a testament to Portland and the Oregon blogging scene that. You know, so many people were affected by this. And at first we were all kind of, oh, this sucks. You know, mm-hmm. we're not going to have ore blocks anymore. And then we, we kind of went, wait, that, you know, it, it, it struck me as like a historical landmark in that, you know, this was something that was really valued. And even though Paul can keep it up again anymore, so to speak, we wanted to, um, we wanted to, to save it. And, and everyone rallied. I mean, there's been an amazing response both on Twitter and, um, you know, comments on the blog and a bunch of people coming, you know, from all over the place who want to help help with this. For everybody from, you know, at one point the Oregonian was saying, hey, can we help? You know, we've had some other, um, you know, local, you know, more traditional media outlets reach out and say, you know, how, how can we help? in this situation. So where we stand right now, to get back to the question, is um, we are really appreciate all the outpouring of, of you know, offers to help, and, and we're kind of weeding through that and trying to figure out what's what. But we do have at least, you know, one or two people who, there's an amazing uh, post by, and I, I'm totally spacing his name right now, but it, yeah, 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 exactly. Who basically sat there and wrote a business plan for Blogs 2.0 for the next 24 months. So, I mean, this guy wants to do it. He's got it figured out. He seems like the primary candidate to to do the heavy lifting on it. And I think, you know, as Betsy and I talked about, we what we don't want to do is have the same problem happen again. We don't want to have, you know, John doing all this work and then, you know, a couple years from now, be tired of doing it. So, you know, we need to figure out how to how to make this more of a community project in terms of having some kind of advisory role to to help him with it and to support it in terms of funding and that sort of stuff to get it off the ground and then kind of figure out where it goes from there. Let me ask you, what do you think it is about Orblogs that made it so indispensable? 
Is that me? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, Rick. Yes. You Rick. Know, yeah. Hey, Rick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, I think Orb Blogs has just been around for so long. Um, you know, and I think Paul would, would be the first to admit that today the technology that runs Orb Blogs is not – I mean, it's it's not rocket surgery, right? I mean, today anyone can <laughs> can get these you know feeds together and kind of run them together. But he did this five years ago, mm-hmm. and he's kind of patched together this site and just kept it going. And it's really been it, the feedback I heard from most people was this was where I learned about so and so, or this is where I saw, you know. Jack Boggs blog for the first time, or this is where I saw, you know, whatever. And I think for so many people, it became that community that where they learned about Oregon blogs. And and that has some kind of emotional value to all of us. And for me, it was one of the, you know, one of the inspirations for, for Silicon Florist, because I saw all this cool stuff kind of, you know, going through or blogs, and I didn't see anybody really talking about it anywhere else. And for for me, our PDX was the last blog to be accepted to our blogs. Wow. And we were in the sidebar for like two and a half months because Paul had said, I have to go on a hiatus while I have some other things to take care of. And this is when he was in the middle of launching Fuely. He said, and I have to make some decisions about where this is going to go. And um, there's been a, a tremendous outpouring of support and people who want to volunteer, and kids who want to put on a show in the the barn. And I think that Rick and I talked about this earlier. We just want to make sure that we can coalesce this energy together in a way that makes sense. We can manage it. We can make sure that we understand what the key things are with our blogs that we want to preserve and move forward with. But more importantly, we want to make sure that we honor Paul's commitment and energy and effort and make sure that we acknowledge his efforts to date as well. Because you said five years. I mean, that's such a long Huge. time to pour into. into and that. I don't think any one of us want to say, oh, we'll just take what you've done and we'll move it to the next level. We want to move it to the next level. But to make, to, uh, you know, give him credit for what he's done today. Yeah. You know. Five years in internet time. Yeah. yeah. Huge. Versa points out that that's five years in internet time, which is like, you know, right. a century. So it seems, uh, uh, you know, it just, it, so being there for five years, this place has become this definitive destination mm-hmm. to find blogs, to find these local blogs, and not just Portland-centric, correct? No. It's all over the state, and that's one of the things we heard really clearly from some of the people chiming into the conversation is, please don't make this a Portland thing. Please don't make this just about PDX blogs. Please try to make this more about the state at large. And I do know that one of the people who wrote to me about this said, when I have been trying to figure out how to reach people in disparate communities around the state, I first went to Orblogs to get the information I needed to make those contacts. And so we want to make sure that the Oregon piece of this stays intact and preserved as part of this. And, and I think, Rick, you were saying maybe, I mean, I don't know if or, Orblogs exists today, but even just like kind of the Portland, Vancouver metro area as well, correct? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's today it's it's Oregon and there've been a couple, you know, I think one of Aaron Hockley's blogs like is Van Portlander right. one is probably, mm-hmm. you know, in there. Um, but I think it, it, some of the things we're looking at are how to make it as inclusive as possible and make sure that um you know, I think there are a lot of folks in Portland simply by word of mouth that know about our blogs, and I'm not entirely convinced that in some of the the smaller towns or less represented towns that that we've really cracked the the market there. I think uh, you know some of some of John's meta John Meta's ideas are really about how do we promote this more effectively so it becomes um, a much larger resource and a much more valuable resource, but um, None of that, and I, and you know, as Betsy said, I always want to just kind of. This has nothing to do with, you know, Paul's effort. I mean, he's done an amazing job. This has been a side project for him, and and one of the things that, uh, as Betsy said, we really want to figure out is how do, what's the reparation for that? How right. do we? 
how do we say thank you to Paul? Is that is that a monetary thing? Is that a continued involvement kind of thing? What you know? How do we pay him back? Because right. He's done something amazing for the community that um, has literally launched a thousand blogs, and and we need to figure out how to pay him back for that because right. he he deserves it. So since since it closed, since it was ended, has have you spoken? Have either of you spoken with him, or spoken in internet terms? I mean, have you had any communication with I him? I have not. I've sent him email. I know that Rick has. So. Yeah, I. Uh, it was funny actually. I sent him kind of a, you know, off the cuff, first blush. Gee, I'm sorry to see this is happening. Um, you know, I I had actually seen Betsy's um, post on rpdx.net, and I went out there uh, because I'd been receiving errors when I would try and ping right. um, or blogs. It would throw errors on mm. me, and I was like, something's not right. And uh, saw Betsy's post and went out and it, it he had re- started the redirect where it threw it to the front page and said, you know, I'm shutting it down. And I sent him a kind of quick message just saying, I'm really sorry to hear that. You know, this is an invaluable resource to a lot of us. If there's anything I can do to help in any way, just let me know. And kind of left it at that. And um, then, you know, as Betsy said, just stuff started happening. Right. And so snowball. By, oh my yeah, God. <laughs> exactly. And by 8 a.m. the next morning, you know, my inbox was full and there was like, um, you know, all these comments on the post and Betsy had written another post and, you know, uh, uh, there was just a lot going on. And so I sat down and I said, I, I, I should probably write a more thoughtful email to Paul. So <laughs> I went to, I went to his other side and said, you know, this is kind of blown out of proportion and, uh, you know, n- not, not, not in a bad way. It's just right. that there's a lot of momentum going here. And, and a lot of I emotion. Think, People were a upset. Lot a lot of emotion. People were very we were upset. stunned by the, the yeah. outpouring yeah. of, you know, oh my God, around, around this. Yeah. And it was amazing. Like everybody, it, it was just one of those times where I think a lot of people were all, I mean, Betsy sitting there on her iPhone, like keeping, <laughs> eating dinner. Was, yeah. And, uh, but everybody was involved and it was great. Right. It was a great Oregon blogging moment. And, um, so I sat down to write that email. Well, at the exact same time, Paul is composing an email back to me. So we can, they kind of crossed in midstream. So I sent him another whiny email saying, you know, Hey, you know, anything I can do to help, this is kind of getting, you know, People are starting to ask and blah, blah, blah. And he actually sent back an incredibly thoughtful email, you know, saying that um, he really, it was a very hard decision for him. He really appreciated all the support and that he would be happy to help in any way that he could, except for one. And that was that he wasn't willing to give over the code to Orblog simply because it had been very much spaghetti and a patchwork quilt of like all these different code code languages and you know the stuff he'd kind of ratcheted together over the past five years and he said you know the technology is there now to rebuild it very easily but he's happy to you know to the, to whomever becomes the new owner or you know the the Test community master. yeah exactly that that kind of oversees this whole thing you know he's perfectly willing to to be an advisor to give over the database like it's not he he'd like to see it going as much as anyone i think he just couldn't keep it up to the standards that he had set for it and he's busy with other things i mean he's got fuely is incredibly popular and and gaining traction and i think he's just got other things to do and you know my assumption was the uh when orblog started throwing those SQL errors, he just kind of tore his hair out and went, okay, I just can't it's, do this. Now. Yeah. It's to the point yeah. where I can't, I can't take it any further. Yeah. 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 So it happens sometimes. It does. It does. Well, Five good. years is a good long run though. That's a heck of a run. And it sounds like, uh, uh, things are moving forward. Then It is. I think that one of the things that Rick and I talked about earlier is that we really appreciate the level of involvement that people want to have with this. We've had a ton of people to say, let me know what I can do to help. Let's do a kids in the barn weekend coding session. And we are incredibly grateful and appreciative of all of those offers. I think what we want to first do is to figure out how can we structure this in a way that's sustainable for the long term, mm-hmm. and that we're not 
like rallying people in a crisis mode to move forward. And so if you don't immediately hear back to say, yes, here's what you can do to help, don't let that be a signal that this isn't appreciated. We value everybody's feedback and contributions. We just want to make sure we can create something that will be sustainable in the long run. So, so I think, yeah, I think with all the resources that we have around here, and the, like you said, the kind of the yeah. beer and blog discussions, it sounds yeah. like it's on its way. It is. Cool. It is. So, Rick, um, just um, to cut on to more important things, I think, um, <laughs> what are you drinking right now? <laughs> this is After Hours. Uh, I am having the Deschutes Brewery Inversion IPA. Ooh. 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 Lovely. And what are we having here tonight? I am having my first, or maybe it's my second ever. Second, yes. Second dry and dirty <laughs> gin martini, lovingly crafted by Cami Chaos, with the 12 Bridges gin that I brought over this evening. And I should mention that if you were to check out Wold Consulting by chance, <laughs> I might score another bottle of premium liquor in return for the plug. But what, wow. what would I get? You would get some of that premium liquor Excellent. in return for the plug. Have we, have we mentioned that World Strange Consulting. Love is looking for sponsors? Yes. Sponsors for Strange Love to provide I, us liquor. I just threw this that in. The show just mix. doesn't make itself by no, itself. No. no, it doesn't. And note that, you know, I think I might be the first guest to actually bring alcohol contributions to the creation of the show. I think yeah. so. Yeah. 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 So we'll I'm be thinking. having you back. That's what I thought. You know, I'm going to yeah, make Betsy this work for me. Betsy can come back on the show. The, she's been to my home twice. The mm-hmm. first time she brought us a bottle of rum. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah. Mount Gay. Mount Gay rum. rum. And there's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> it's okay. And this time she brought not one, but two bottles of gin to share. But I'm not leaving them behind when I leave. Oh, I haven't had the I, second bottle, so I'm, I'm drinking I'm really the kind of bridges. afraid of what's going to happen when you see the 12 Bridges bottle. It's <laughs> okay. It's more than half consumed. Cammy, I love you, though, so it'll be okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So and, and I'm oh and I'm, and studio audience this evening. No, no, no. I'm. You're also drinking the same the thing. The Twelve Bridges. A gin dirty dry. Was talked about Twelve Bridges gin right. martini on right. Strange Love. So a guests very nice of the love. Strange Love show are drinking Twelve Bridges rum. Oh, they don't have a microphone. Verso, what are you drinking, baby? I am drinking Twelve Bridges gin with lemonade. Mm. Media chick. The same. <laughs> I would like to say at this point that 12 Bridges might want to kick in a little something. something and I would like to heart. also point right. out. We that, have a new uh, set, by the way. So, <laughs> and that, you know, it's that not free. That set didn't say free. It's cheap. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I would like to also point out that if you are a fan of Beer and Blog, when we get together on Friday afternoons, they make 12 Bridges gin right through the window in the restaurant. So if you are a person who's a fan of buying local, it really doesn't get any more local than just Auvergnat. So, right. so it's they integrity. actually... They make it, yeah. It's oh, Integrity yeah. Spirits, right? Yes. Thank you very much. Um, integrity Spirits. Yeah, and and so they actually make that on gin. site at Green Dragon. At right? the Green Dragon. Okay, yes, so right. this is what I mean. We had Kavit on yes. last week, mm-hmm. and this is what we talked about. With so when and I was yes. listening and paying attention, and neither one of you two had had twelve That's bridges. Correct. That's exactly. Correct. So I offered it up to you tonight. So, and I love it. So <laughs> I Rick, love it a lot. Rick, are you a gin drinker? I am, yeah, actually. I'm uh, uh, pre- the the stuff that has alcohol in it. I like. Oh, you like the boozy stuff? Yeah. Oh, the, so you don't like the non-alcoholic gin, is what? Right. You're <laughs> the non-alcoholic <laughs> gin. Not so much a fan. He's very particular about his beverages. <clears throat> it's after hours. That's right. So what do we got? I, I <laughs> Nothing. think. No, 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 I have something. I think that so we, much breaking news. No, no, because it's about me, right? It's Strange Love it's Live. Well, to it's be. Strange Love After Hours. I want to talk about why we have Betsy on the show. You, you know how I know it's After Hours? Because you lean into the damn. I mic. do. I get really close. I so, get really close. So the first part of the, the show, microphone. you're perfectly. On Maybe the mic. we should turn my headset back up so I can hear myself. Oh, good idea. That's why you're leaning in the <laughs> mic. I'm afraid that you got you guys and that hear new me. eight channel headphone amplifier didn't pay for itself, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. So sponsors for the Strange Love Show. Twelve Bridges, you're listening, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I think we should talk about 
you know, Betsy didn't just happen upon the show. It's not like I was like, oh, this interesting person, Betsy, I should have her on the show. I know Betsy. Yeah, you do. Why do I know Betsy? Ah, tell us. <laughs> oh, I, hey, the hey. show is about you. Yeah, I have why to. Do you know Betsy? I have to remember. Um, you know, seventeen billion years ago, in internet time. Yeah. Doctor Normal said, "Do you ever read Portland Metro blogs?" And I said, "Is it about me?" <laughs> and he said, "No, sweetie. It's in, it's not about you. No, you but you could it. make it about you." <laughs> he did. He said, "You could make it about you." They're looking for authors. Yes, we were. And I said, "My goodness, I like to author things." <laughs> and and here's the thing: at the time when I think you and I exchanged email, you were so timid and so demure and, and so, nice. And I nice. can do that sometimes. And I don't know that anybody would be interested in hearing what I have to say. Yeah, I'm just doing this little mom thing over here. Hello. And I came back and said, no, 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 you got a voice. And I think you can kick it. And you did. She did so. say that. Yeah, Something did. along those lines. Yeah. I can recognize it. Mm. It was pretty awesome. It and, was. And so then I started and I joined Miss Verso over there, who was a Metro blog writer at the time. I was. And I joined the Fancy Pants Metro blog team that I have to say right now, the people who are writing for Metro blogs were fantastic. And I met mm-hmm. some of my f- f- as I introduced Betsy on the show earlier, one of my favorite Portland people, I, I met some of my favorite Portland people when I was writing for Metro Blogs. And I don't it's think nice that I would it. even be doing this podcast now. I just kind of, you know, I did Metro Blogs. I started meeting people. I started mm-hmm. thinking about the Portland tech scene, the Portland blogging scene. Mm-hmm. And I think that really kind of snowballed its way into me actually speaking to people. And you do it quite well. Thank you. Yay. Yay. I mean, it, it is. It's an amazing to see. And I think the difference here in Portland, and I can speak a little bit about what it was like in New York when mm-hmm. I was on the BBS, and I think part of what worked about Echo was that we met each other in person as well. Mm-hmm. That is very much at the heart of why Portland blogging works, mm-hmm. is that we can be exchanging, you know, we've got blog posts up, we can be doing Twitter back and forth, but we also show up at things like Beer and Blog or Legion of Tech events or we're doing things here and there. Or, or a twin running. up over at FOTM. Yeah, or, Whoa. you know, pie off. The pie off. Yeah. I mean, things happen, and you mm-hmm. get a chance to meet and see and get to know the people that you're exchanging, you know, email with, too. I, I really appreciated that. Yeah. I think we have a question from the studio Whoa. audience. Yeah. No, it's really just that I want to put in my two bits because part of what I think really helped. That's the Verso, Portland. by the way, who has yeah. not learned to identify herself. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, because <laughs> nobody knows the person in the studio audience who's itching to get the microphone is me, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, I would just like to point out that I think that really what helped the Portland Metro blog really hold its own against uh, Metro blogs in other cities like Los Angeles and New York and part of the reason that the Portland Metro blog was such a big deal and at one point we were sort of held up as the poster children to cities all around the world. We We kicked ass. Fancy pants. Because we We kicked kicked so much ass. And why did we kick ass? Because we would go to the Rose and Raindrop once a month and Mm. hang out and we got to know each other. I Mm -hmm. miss the Rose and Raindrop era. Which is also tragic. But it was nice to be able to go, hey, one of us like has been known to blog about like blazer games and someone told me this Mm -hmm. cool blazer thing. Hey, I'll shoot you an email and say, hey, why don't you write about this? Or, hey, Cammie, there's this thing coming to town that you and your Camulet would be totally having a good time at. Maybe you guys should go and check it out and maybe you can blog about it. Mm-hmm. Or someone could go, hey, um, nerdy thing, what do you want to do for so? Like, yeah. get, you know, be down. So it was really nice to be able to meet in person because that interaction is something that never happens online. Right. You will never be able to replace that. I sure. just have to say it's a really good thing that uh, Doctor Who was never filmed in Portland because then Verso and I would have had like a smackdown brawl oh that would have gone to write about it. It would have been so bad. It would have been really yeah. violent so, and ugly. And that's why I think that, you know, Shazow has such potential here in the Portland really? market. Yeah. And I think it's because it was here. And yeah. I think I don't think yeah. that something like Shazow could have come out of any other place. I agree completely. No. I agree. Because as an added bonus, they know all these people to go, hey, Betsy, hey, Cammie, hey, media chick, mm-hmm. why don't you guys hey, Rick, why don't come you tell us, us where you're talk. at? Let's <laughs> right. yeah. point out. Yeah. And, and having that kind of community. And I, I don't, 
I truly believe, and I, I haven't spent a whole lot of time in you know geek scenes in other places, but I truly believe that it's partly the nerdity in Portland and partly Portland that causes this to come together the way that it does. And see, I have spent that time. I've spent time in New York in the geek community there and the, the tech community there when the internet was really first taking off. And then I spent some time in Silicon Valley. And I came up to Portland and... There wasn't a tech community of sorts. There was a little bit of one when the internet was really taken off and it was the big, huge boom and a lot of, I remember events on boats for some reason or open bars and that kind of deal. Yeah, I've, It's been the last two or three mm-hmm. years that I've really seen, in the last yeah. year in particular, for that sure. the tech community in Portland has come together. Yes. Why and it's been about exchanging information, but having a, a whole lot of fun as well. Why so. don't we have a Portland tech event on a boat? Because I think things on boats always go well. <laughs> I have so bad memories of times. I, I think I think one of the cool things about the the whole that whole uh, Metro blog or blogs type thing is that um, you had um, some uh, professional tech writers and folks as part of the mix. You had I mean you had um, some people who were doing some yeah. main, right. mainstream media. Right. Then you had people who were coming up like right. you know like like Gammy's example and things. And it was just a very cool mix of people because. You know, it's kind of like you got this this whole mixture of folks. Well, one of the really interesting people that I've developed a relationship with um, after we ended our professional relationship, our quasi-professional relationship, is Steve Woodward at the Argonian. And when I was working for Oregon Live... That's Steve and Oregonian I, Steve, Steve on Twitter. Absolutely. I follow right him. And... We do. We um, all love Oregonian we do. Steve. And we would like Oregonian Steve yes. to come on the and show. And media chicks yes. wants to come on the show. Awesome. And I was supposed to help broker the introduction, but That's I right. guess I don't need to do that. Oregonian Steve, you can come on my show. <laughs> Absolutely. I have an open date. We'll yeah. talk to you about it. And and I think the thing that I've appreciated is that after I left Oregon Live, Steve and I have been exchanging email for a number of years for a variety of reasons, whether it was professional or personal or the personal blogging that I was doing, and then with Met Blogs and then our PDX. But we've developed this relationship over time and um, a level of trust there as well. And it, it's what needs to happen if you're going to move things to the next level. Because what happens in the case of the Your Blog situation is that I've turned into connective tissue. <laughs> it's a bizarre analogy. Excuse me. I know. Stick with <laughs> it. Stick Wait a minute. Connective it. tissue. Connective uh, tissue. And let's run through that. Wait a minute. It's what I do all the time in, in wherever I am. Is that so let's somebody see, let's comes name to me and asks me? What, no. is the, what is connective? It's cartilage. No. What is it? <laughs> what I, is connected? I connect people to other people. This is okay. ugly. Yeah. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to turn it into an anatomy issue. I'll never mind. But it's it's more about I know you and I'm going to connect you to you. Yeah. Right. And I have this and whole thing that I do in email right now where I do virtual introductions to people. Hey, so and so, you really need to meet so and so. Hey, so and so, you really need to meet so and so. It's just hooking people together. There's a lot of that yeah. in Portland, and that brings Ton. us back. Do we still have Ton. Rick on the line? We do. Yes, I'm still here. That brings us back to Rick. You can listen to me ramble away. Thank I'm you very much. I love it. I, it's it's interesting because there's a huge delay on the video, so oh. like I, I'm listening on the headphones and trying to watch the video. And it's you kind secretly of, have knowledge of the future. Yeah, exactly. I know what she's going to say. Can I'm, you tell me that I need to shut up already? <laughs> Please. Drink some more. By the way, Rick, you're not funny. Oh, versus is you're oh, not funny, Rick. Come right? on. And of course, me being the studio engineer, I'm pointing at everyone's cell phone and getting pissed off and realizing that it's my cell phone that's causing the problem oh, back behind the board because somebody's I, leaving me a voicemail. I was reaching over Betsy's phone and, and like touching it off. her phone and turning it off. And I'm like, why are you touching my exactly, device? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Betsy gave me the nastiest look I've I ever did. received from her. Don't so, touch the iPhone. So what I'm trying to figure out now is where it all works out. We know why, why I know Betsy. And I'm trying to figure out why I know Rick. Everybody knows Rick. Everybody knows Rick. How does everyone know Rick, Rick? Uh, I used to read a lot of Met blogs. <laughs> I don't. There we go. It's, and and yeah. Silicon Florist is just over a year old. Too. I'll be honest. I didn't read Silicon Florist until after I met Rick. You, you, didn't read, you didn't read Silicon Florist until I linked to your site because of the open ID thing. 
right? No, no, I'd I mean, read, read it. it. <laughs> I'd read it once before that. Yeah. Once. Although clearly he knows you now. I read it before that. <laughs> Dr. Normal is a kiss ass. So we're, yeah. you know, we're married. It kind of fits, right? I read tech stuff, it's you know. It's true. He reads the tech stuff, and then I look at things once they link to me. I don't know. Was Silicon Floors, was it, was it a mommy blog? or? <laughs> you know, oh, I'll go over and kick him if you want me to, Rick. Just say the word. I have bigger boots. My, her, her shoes are made of rubber. Mine will hurt more. <laughs> hey, he's a, got kids, you know. Yeah. He does, but he's not a mommy. No. He's a daddy. There's a lot of daddy blogs now. There are some daddy blogs now. But we're trying to figure out why we know Rick. Betsy, if you need to put the know. drink down and itch because you're getting a rash from all the parental blogging cutesy phrases, please feel free. Yeah. So, Rick, how did yeah. you get your start in the Portland bloggy scene? Um, that's a really uh, good question. I've been blogging for about eight years. Um, my... I have a couple of terribly failed blogs. One is hypocritical.com and the other was um, yep. more than a living.com. What was the second and one? More than a living. Oh, more and than it was a living. Yeah. I thought it was more yep. than a whipping, too. I, yeah. Yeah. More than a whipping I heard naughty exactly things. That was a lot more popular. Everybody just, has exactly. one or two failed blogs in their past. Yeah. Everybody and, does. And I, so those were, those were not um, terribly well read blogs, but I did learn a lot. From mm, yeah. you know writing on those and and how to how to deal with um, you know people readers and commenting and and all that kind of fun stuff and um, you know I just it was just kind of one of those random things like there were there was just a gap and I happened to be just lucky enough to kind of step into the gap and start blogging at a time when people thought they needed that information right. and. Now I, I have a commitment to it. I mean, now people are actually reading it, and I I have to write. So yeah. um, you do I, have to write, damn it! I know at least <laughs> once a day, and um, the pressure. Yeah. I know it kills. You should, you should see like the the. Uh, it's not you know it's all in good fun, but like people get kind of mad when I do like more than one link blog. Uh, you know, it's, yeah. if the, my two posts are just link blogs, I, I get don't get mad because you've been linking to us a lot lately. <laughs> There you go. Jeez. But I need to I need to post nice. on you. Nice. Not so. Nice. Um, yeah. yeah. But okay. I don't know. I don't know how it. I I seriously was just dumb luck. I have no idea why you, you guys. You hit it I feel at the very, right time. You know really you did hit it at the right time, Rick. Where yeah. the Portland tech scene was really starting to co- recoalesce, and you just happened to be there to help document what was happening. So, yeah. I mean, it's more than yeah. that, but it was just a timing issue. And we're looking at the studio audience, and, and what in the world's going yeah. on over there? The They're studio about to get audience fired. Yeah. solved yeah. into a fit of giggles. <laughs> They're about to get fired. Okay. Um, uh, the so, um, back to how's your studio audience doing over there, Rick? <laughs> Are they doing okay? Yeah, Are you keeping them under control? They for some reason. Yeah. Oh, your studio audience is sleeping. I wonder if my studio audience ever sleeps. <laughs> yes, they do. I don't know. A mallet might help, but I didn't bring <laughs> mine tonight. I might have brought the gin, but not the mallet. So did you make it home from uh, Mint the other night? I did. Well, obviously Betsy. she's here. I did. We had a nice little time. So we should we should talk. So this is it after hours. We should talk about our our social life or lack thereof, right? Well, we actually went out. We can't claim to have a lack of social life when every once in a while we actually leave the house. Yeah, but then you post it on Twitter and you right. post it on the internet and people think you've got this huge Well, no. See, what happens life. is this. Every once in a while I leave the, the house. And the truth is you have no social life. Well, you see, just happen to... unless you're me and you have already broadcast the fact that your children are overseas for I the know. next yeah, 10 days you and oh, you already yeah. have plans for eight of those 10 days. Yeah, there you go. So, you know. So this is what happened. Last Saturday, mm-hmm. we went to the Portland Pie Off. Right. And so, that was awesome. That was super duper awesome. That was one of the coolest events. I, it, it was just, great. It just was, because I don't know. I have to say, though, he's saying this is one of the coolest events ever, and it really, really was. We didn't even get to eat pie. We had to leave no. right before the pie we was eaten. We left hungry. And we still loved it. We left hungry. My we daughter will make you there. a some more pie. Oh, you tell her that she I will. will. All right, back. when she gets back, she I want a pie. We I'm left sure hungry. We left sad and hungry. The two pies I wanted to try more than anything were the s'more pie, which turned out to be an award winner. Mm-hmm. I think we need some sexy music 
sexy to to announce the second pie that I wanted to <laughs> eat. I oh, wanted to now eat. we're talking about pie. I oh. wanted to eat Diesel Boy's meat pie. pie. I wanted meat pie too. He I mean, had not I usually one. don't play on not that side of the track. He had not I wanted one meat but pie too. two meat pies. No, 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 no. Let's oh, be honest. Yeah. He had one meat pie and one not meat pie. And you know, I was there for the pie off and I still didn't and get he wore a kilt. any yeah. meat pies. Because everybody rushed for the meat pies and they were gone by the time I could well, get he over had, there. He had like a vegetarian sausage pie yeah, and did. then a meat sausage mm-hmm. pie. He did. That's the Diesel Boy meat pie. He rocked it. <laughs> he rocked Rockin it. in the house with his meat pie. <laughs> In a we love you, Brought Diesel you Boy. Diesel Thank you, Diesel Boy. And you're your Dilla Kilt. And Rick, your meat pie. how do you feel about meat pies? Rick, you weren't at the pie <laughs> off. How do you feel about your Dilla Kilt? <laughs> yes. Are you comfortable with meat pies? The meat pie? Yeah. Uh, are you comfortable in that? <laughs> are you comfortable in a kilt? Do you wear a kilt? <laughs> I, I actually used to, I, I used to wear a kilt from time to time. Oh, a lot of my- a lot of my background is Scottish. I have to say, the question isn't do you or do you not wear a kilt, but what do you wear under the kilt? Everybody knows what real Scottish guys wear under kilts. Hello. I'm sorry. So what the question is, how Stating Scottish the are you? We shouldn't really allow me to talk so about kilts. So Scottish. There, there's He's no caught. issues with me in kilts. We shouldn't discuss kilts on the show. Wait a minute. Um, have we, fini- have we finished the pie off? Yeah. It- are we done? It's a kilt thing. It's a kilt. Okay, we're done All with right. the pie off. Let's talk about kilts. Verso. Oh, do you have any more comments on the pie? Oh, good God, no. It was fun. It was. (laughs) Back to Verso. I have to point out, um, ages ago when Mel Gibson was doing the tour for Braveheart, the press tour, he was on, I think, Letterman. And the only reason I bring this up is because I always thought it was the best line ever. And at some point, there was much discussion about what all of the actual Scottish people were wearing under their kilts. And at one point... Nothing. Exactly. Well, not quite. Because at one point, Mel Gibson walked up to one of them and said the crew has, has made this question much, you know, made much of this discussion. And so I've been selected to come over here and ask you. So I'm going to come and ask you, what are you wearing under your kilt? And he said, the guy he asked did not miss a beat, looked Mel Gibson dead in the eye and said, your wife's lipstick. Oh. Oh. Nice. Oh, snap. Oh, damn. Okay, so that was only part of the day. (laughs) Oh, okay, so, but I want to make note of the fact that... Okay, so, um, so then we went to... Then we went home. Then we went home. Okay. And that was it. No. No, that was not it. We went to the anti-prom. Thank you, Lolly Ray, for hosting the anti-prom. And that was fun. And it's interesting. My favorite picture from the anti prom that I took and interesting. that I took from my iPhone was the mosh pit where all these people in gowns and kind of suits and stuff were on the ground and they were mosh pitting and there's one guy kneeling in front of the crowd and he looks like he's taking a piss all over them. And I thought <laughs> that yeah. was the moment. It was punk. It was it, it was awesome. Right. I mean, it just it just worked for me. Well, see the mood for me was really deflated because at one point, one of the, the lead singer and guitar player in the band, the really loud one... <laughs> was your babysitter. <laughs> came up to me and said, hi, Zoe's mom. And I was like, oh. Yeah. He's the guy who runs the aftercare program for my daughter's school. Oh, yeah. And, and it, you know, I And you're the lead feeling, singer of this band. And I was feeling, you know, hot. I was feeling hip. I was feeling... Together, I was in the Until moment. Until someone used and the all word sudden, mom, mom at you. Yeah. You know, Zoe's mom. Yeah. Oh, shit. Anyway. Um, my favorite nice. photo of We have evening. since had discussions about it, and Not he thought I was cool for being there. So, okay. Well, you were yeah, cool. Yeah, you got... I know. You were there. You know, mean cred for being there. Uh-huh. I've seen his band. I know. They were pretty good. It was good. They were good. They were yeah. very good. So. And then there was the furry guys. Um, <laughs> pl- Gosh. Uh, uh, pluk- no, come on, guys. Plukter, Plakter, Fluffker, Freak. Oh, furry, God. Furry, fuzzy, that was pajama fun. blanket boys. I think, yeah. I'm sorry Rick missed that one. Rick, I think Rick, Rick would have really enjoyed oh, Your lovely that. wife. You and your lovely wife This was an acoustic to punk duo dressed as furries. But they weren't terrifically articulate or they didn't know how to enunciate. You don't have to be articulate when you're you doing do, acoustic punk. But you have to know how to enunciate. Come on. We both remember the gong show, right? I mean, this was straight hey, out of the gong show. they have a new show. gong show. Okay. They do? 
Yeah, with yeah. David Tell. David Tell hosting the new Gong Show. I haven't seen so that I just want to say my favorite picture from the anti prom is the picture that Lolly Ray took. And it's a picture of Media Chick and, and Miss Burroughs. Yes. And Dr. Normal and I. And Media yes. Chick has a camera, and Dr. Normal and I are playing with our iPhones. Yeah. And uh, Miss Burroughs is not having any technology. She will, though, soon. She's getting technology. She's going to have you. to get a cell phone. And so then after the anti prom, we went to Mint. And yes. I'd never been to Mint before. Actually, I. Nah. See, this is where we don't ever get out. We never right? get to leave the house ever, ever. Because I, I knew the person who started Mint. I had never been to Mint. And finally, we went to Mint. Dr. Normal is the name of. And so uh, we had. I had. I had. I had two cocktails. I had a beet cocktail made out of beets. Did you try that, Betsy? I did not. No, you did. I gave you a shot. Yeah, you don't remember. I don't (laughs) remember. (laughs) It's that old and decrepit thing, you know? Yeah. No, it's you the, said it was a rhyme. Right. Oh, okay. bunch of drinking. It was okay. <laughs> yeah, I've been drinking. Actually, for I think long. everyone at the table tried my beat. I tried cocktail. it. It was nasty. <laughs> we all. <laughs> <laughs> Not touching that with a ten-foot Media check pole. needs to have a microphone. Yeah. Well, that was a, that was a Lucy's Lucy's big right. thing. Who started? It I mean, was. to make these <laughs> it was. cock, you know, interesting cocktails, and she's you know one of our big mixologists yes, here in is. Portland. So. I'm another one, according to Google. But oh, there we go. Yeah. What did you have? Doctor Normal have really mo- likes mojitos. Yeah, by the way, uh, uh, my mojito recipe, uh, it rocks. So. What did you have to drink, Betsy? I had. I don't. Remember. <laughs> you don't remember? I absolutely, positively, oh, do not God. remember what I had. Oh my god. You had gosh. two of it. I had two. Whatever it was. <laughs> I thought it was just a basic, like a gin and something or a gin and tonic. No, or it a, no, it wasn't a gin it and wasn't tonic. A wow, gin and tonic. you were having a good I remember you time, ordered something off the menu. I did. Hmm. It all blurs together over time. Is it a margarita of some sort? No, it was no. not a margarita. Yeah. I don't know. I had the splash, but I don't remember what was in it, except no. for that it had some stuff. I, I was so I thrilled was that I was out. Yeah, I think with we're adults. All... I was so like thrilled that you came bar. out to join us. It was a total impromptu thing because I, w- I remember the in the agony, you know, the piece was I have nothing to wear. And then I Meat Pie Man, yes. Diesel Boy joined, oh, yes, us. He joined us. The man with the meat pies joined but us. I, I, was he still wearing his kilt? Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Oh god. And then he took oh, his we shirt remember. off. <laughs> oh, he did. He took his shirt off for us. I yes. hope he remembers that. Yeah. I know. Yeah. So. yeah. Hey, Rick, did. will you join us for our next party? <laughs> <laughs> and wear a kilt and or a shirt you can take off. Exactly. <laughs> this is scary. I'm just, I'm just gonna stay on mute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh god. <laughs> to be fair, we only asked him to take his shirt off because he had tattoos on his chest that we right. wanted to see. And he was more than happy to take his shirt off. He did it without hesitation. I turned around at one point and I didn't realize what you guys have been talking about. <laughs> like, why is he sitting she, next to me without his shirt on? Yeah, she I turned don't to get see it. to see yeah. Brett. The question is, why did Cammy Chaos take her shirt off to show us her tattoos? Cammy Chaos was wearing a corset. Take off your shirt. The studio audience is a little lively tonight. Okay. They've oh. all seen me without my shirt on, I'm sure. I haven't. Not you can't recently. not it. Come on. Yeah, not recently. Not today. Take off your shirt. <laughs> not today. Show us your tats. Oh, uh, <laughs> so Doug Coleman in the chat room says Hi, he, had Doug. A, he has a great recipe for avocado margaritas, I think. Um, that I that might is. officially love you, Doug, because yeah, I think those are two of my favorite things. Can I tell you that they I have, have amazing yeah. avocado gelato oh, that oh, we yeah. had at my yeah. office? We had this great event at my office that was ice cream day. Ooh. And people brought in homemade ice cream to share. I'm going to interrupt and just say, Doug lunch. Coleman, can you just like um, yeah. email me the recipe for the yes. avocado margarita? Yeah. It does sound good. Or yeah. we can change my interview to an evening thing and we can have the avocado margarita then. See, I, I need that. 12 Bridges gin and I can be upstage at any time. I lo- uh. My, my, my glass is empty and unfortunately I'm the one who has to make the drinks. She's moving on to the next. We need an intern. Yeah. I need an intern that can make a good dirty... Oh, here's the thing. The intern has to be able to make a good dirty dry gin martini. Right. Yes. As good as I make. Well, you just train them. That's true. I could teach them how. It's like a dog. You beat them until they make the proper martini. I don't. Oh. I don't think dogs huh. make martinis. No, no, no. I, I, but you beat a dog until the dog does what 
what you want it to do. So you beat the intern until the intern is like... Hello, that's the ASPCA at the door. Okay, <laughs> so, so interns get to drink alcohol and they get to be beaten by me. So if you'd like to be an intern for Strange Love... I think um, Verso, every guy in the chat room just like pretty much should be emailing you right now. For us. <laughs> oh, it's me? Okay. Awesome. I don't know. Yeah, I'm just delegating authority right now. Um, From the chat room. I'm new here. Take it off. <laughs> yeah. We get a lot of that on Ustream, right? I can amend it. Yeah, we do get a lot nasty of nasty stream. It's definitely for you and not for me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> so last week last week on the show we yeah. had you can turn off the music now Dr. Yeah, I'm Marvel. working on it yeah you can fade just, it down I'm working on it don't pressure me see when when Rick came on the show I think we just gave him alcohol I don't think we actually fed him Rick did we give you any food when you came on the show no just like 12 kinds of rum <laughs> <laughs> excellent there were, there were you get no food I have my priorities we had pastries oh there were pastries but Cammy was kind of hogging them Remember. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. I That's was right. hogging the pastries. That's right. There's this great chocolate-filled pastry. So last week on the show, because Kaviton was here, we had bacon. And Lots of and bacon products. Pork yes. Products. And I we think bought everyone. this fantastic dark chocolate Ooh. to shave on top of the. She's um, handing me prosciutto. Ooh. That stuff is good. It's too. good. Mm. That stuff is great. So I'm gonna share the the rest of the chocolate stuff here with my, with my people. Yeah, that that's um. It, what brand is it? Is it the? It says dark and green. Or it something? is green and black organic dark chocolate. Oh, that stuff is good. Mm. And how many percent? How much? How much? No, I'm good. I, I've had my mm. fill this week. It is. And I'm not a chocoholic. Well, eighty five percent cocoa. Ah, yeah. Wow. Uh, it's fantastic, mm. and it's dark. It's like eating dirt. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> it yeah. is. It's like it's like just going out there getting a big old spoon of dirt mm-hmm. sticking in your mouth. So it goes good with alcohol. Oh sure. Works for me. Yeah, see part of the reason my daughter won the some more pie is that I sprung for the sharpened sharpened burger chocolate. Mm. Oh. Sir La Tom. And also bought her a pie pan there. Lovely. I'm indulgent parent. What can yeah, I say? Yeah. Yeah. Mm mm. I'm sorry I'm there's like chocolate dirt in my mouth. So your dance card is pretty well filled for the next ten days. You're saying, huh? It's you're, amazing. You're really a foodie and everything. I mean, the mm-hmm. whole the whole thing, mm-hmm. right? Um, want to be foodie? Um, Except I, for the kids, right? Yeah, it's the kids. They they're like millstones around my Those ankles. Damn I can't, children! Yeah, I know. I don't know what to do about them. If you drown them, you could be a foodie. Believe me, I have a 15 year old teenage boy. The thought hasn't crossed my mind, but every you know. <laughs> Two Probably hours. <laughs> oh, good lord! Um, for those of you, and Rick and I talked about this earlier tonight, your children will one day Kill tell you? you that you are stupider than dirt. Oh, mine's already done that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you will be. You will humiliate your children beyond belief. And if you're me, you're laugh all the way to the bank because it's fun for you to yeah. twist the knife that way. Yeah. Um, you. Are occasionally worth something, but most most often than not, not so much. I'm looking at Media Chick over here nodding her head yeah. in agreement. Yeah, she's got a teenage oh, boy yeah. as well. Oh yeah, the the epitome of what we went through. So as parents, I think what we're sending out mm-hmm. the message: kids suck. Don't have them. <laughs> Take it from us. We're parents. There are brief moments. Oh, ever so brief. Of you joy. know what? I'm good this week. This week I'm good. A quick flash. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But it's a flash in the pan. Trust mm-hmm. me. You know what? I'm fine this week. Seriously, this week, back to school week. Back to school week. Freaking rock. Mm. <laughs> I know. Did you see the post I did at RPDX? With the video? Yeah. Woo. With the the most the best day of the year or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. It was like, hell yes. So I'm looking at. I'm gonna be able to like go downtown mm-hmm. and have lunch with my with my friend Verso soon. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. back to school time. Yeah. So speaking of lunch. Mm-hmm. So what restaurants have you hit? What restaurants are you hitting this week? This coming week. Because I know you've got a list. I have a list. 
Um, and you're checking it twice. Oh, well, I have foodie friends. Yeah. And what happened? Was and there's it? great. No, what about yeah, blogs, yeah. man? There's great Portland Tons. foodie blogs. One of my favorite mm. blogs of all is. You mentioned Guilty Carnivore. Is Guilty Carnivore oh, does geez. amazing stuff. Also, the guy who does Bruce Brower at Eat. <gasps> yes. Bruce, Drink and Think. Eat, drink, Think. Hi, we Bruce. Love it. We, we love need it. to get our friend have you Bruce ever been on to, the show. Have you ever been to his wine shop? I have not. Oh, my God. On the street. We need to take that seat to see Bruce. Actually, before we did this Friday podcast, that's where we'd spend our time every at his Friday. wine shop doing Every Friday wine we'd tasting. go to Bruce's wine shop and do wine tasting. It's within walking distance, yeah. so you know, oh, we can do that um, sort yeah. of thing. Anybody to wants that. to go to, an, to a lovely wine tasting Friday nights, go to Vino. Okay. Uh, it's up off of 13th. Yeah, 13th and... Uh, Lexington. Lamb. Lexington. Lexington. I knew it started with It's on Lexington and 13th and Selwood. And Selwood. And, and Bruce puts on an awesome spread. Mm-hmm. Every yep. Friday night, five wines, two, two bonus, bonus pours. pours. Sometimes three. Ooh. Um great guy great, too great just a really nice the nicest i used to have a really big problem dr norma would want to go wine tasting and i would always say no 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 it's too pretentious i can't everyone will stare at me and the first time i went up to bruce's shop i felt completely yeah. and totally at home i was oh, like yeah. oh my That's gosh my response was it's wine <laughs> yeah i am hitting monday night let me lay out the week itinerary for you monday night i am finally finally hitting happy hour at 10 one Mm. Which I have heard wonderful things about. I've heard we one dollar oyster shooters. I have heard bacon tater tots. Bacon I've heard tater tots. Sliders. I have heard about what was the last? There was another thing that was like, oh my god, I have to be there. And I talked to some people tonight. Because of course, I had to do the hop from beer and blog mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to Fenwa. Was it Fenwa? Fenwe. 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 Mm-hmm. Where I have been there in a while. Beverages and and food and stuff with several pleasant people. What did you? Some eat? of whom are listening tonight. What did you I eat? Though? Though? I did Twitter not. I was sort of. Oh, you just had. I big... think I had some of the truffle fries and oh, the nipples God, the off of fries so other good. people's plates. It was phenomenal, but I got the seal of approval to do Monday night at at ten one, and then. Thursday night, I'm thinking it might very well be Lincoln, okay. which is the new place up in North. I was just going to say, what's the yeah. new places? The new, the new. Well, here's the thing. My friend Janet, who I love dearly, always looks to me to be the guiding light about where the new cool places to and go. And you just read some blogs, and, and then I you read talk some blogs, right? yeah. and I'm you yeah. know this 45 year old woman, shh, no, this is whatever. The of it, right? But it is. It's I read blogs. It's says really good food and blogs. You just friends. read some blogs and go. Oh, and I know people who are writing the food blogs, and we exchange email, and we're on Twitter together, and it's this networking thing that happens that makes it worthwhile. Twitter feeds yes, us. Yes, it does. I was at lunch today with a bunch of people at work, and here I have all this insight in, you know, cutting edge stuff about the Portland food scene, and there's like, when have you last gone anywhere? Oh, couldn't tell you. Yeah. I just yeah. know all the dirt. It, it's that so. kids thing. Trust me. Yeah, I know. You want to eat good food? Don't have kids. You hey. want one or two of mine? Feel free. Rick, no. what's your favorite restaurant to go to? When you go on date night, what's your favorite restaurant? Uh, um, yeah. Do you get it's a chance been, to go on yeah, date it's night? It's been so long since we've been on date night. And we generally, we live in Southwest, so we generally kind of go to restaurants around where we live, which don't tend to be amazing by any means but mm. um, placements and crayons that they hand out with the hostess right dr norman yeah, and i are very lucky yeah, when we manage to to score a date night we can walk to any number of fine i know restaurants. you guys have you guys have amazing restaurants over there just like within within close shot and um, we you know we go actually even with the kids we go over to gino's quite a bit just because gino's, it's, mm-hmm. it's great, where we have never eaten <laughs> <laughs> it's it's actually really good. The only thing is the kitchen is like a two burner kitchen, so yeah, it you takes know, forever. It's, yeah, mm. yeah, that's yeah, what it's we've really heard. Sl- great food, which is probably so. why we never go so over there because really it's like, <laughs> damn it, the chaos <laughs> family wants their food now. Yeah. I don't care what the atmosphere is like. <laughs> slow food, screw you. <laughs> um, not a slow movement. Slow food movement family. Has anybody, and I hope I'm saying it But right. actually, let me let me just say, oh, our fav- has things or to say. my favorite restaurant in this neighborhood in Selwood is uh, Elaine- Elaine's. Elaine's. Elaine's up on 13th. It's a Greek restaurant. Mm-hmm. I've heard of it. Mm, good. I, love I read Greek about food. it and have never been there. I love Greek food. Oh, you food. need to eat there. I should. Um, Fantastic. When they have the rack of lamb on special, mm-hmm. they only the do it on special when they can bring it in fresh from uh-huh. New Zealand, I believe. Mm-hmm. 
Um, you got to get the rack of lamb. Okay. Their moussaka is also excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just really nice stuff. And they have one in, in uh, the Pearl. Okay. And it's uh, more fish-oriented. Right. I've right. never been there, but I'd right. love to try that place. And she's there often. She's right. like right there in the restaurant. In her lab coat. Hovering, hovering over. She, she, really I, nice everything has you. to be perfect. She wants everything to be perfect yeah. all the time. Yep. I can tell you about another place in your neighborhood that you guys need to go to if you haven't yet. And this is again. I'm doing the reading. I'm doing the research go, for you. Is Taste Bud? Oh, I don't even know where that Taste where Bud is, is on Milwaukee, right across from the Aladdin. I'm and yeah. Taste I don't even Bud know what you're talking about is Mark Doc Statter, who did it still does the um, wood fired pizza at the Portland is it Farmers across Market the street downtown. From the, across the street from the Aladdin, and it's kind of hard to out. see. There's not a real big sign outside, and there's like. A lot of greenery and water yep. and stuff happening. I know exactly. You, what you're what was the name about. of it before that? Didn't it, it used I to be a catering not, business? I would not know. No, no, no. It's next door to the catering business. Yeah. I know okay. exactly. I, yeah. I, I, I think my old boss works at the catering business. Yeah. But he has this great wood fired oven and he's been doing these wood fired pizzas and stuff down at the Portland, the big farmer's market. The one in the park box? In the park box. Okay. And he finally broke off to do the restaurant, Taste Bud. And the reason that I know. Mark and the stuff that he does is first of all the farmer's market, but also he went, um, brought his pizza oven, the portable pizza oven, to my daughter's synagogue and what? taught the kids how to make um, matzah before mm. Passover. Oh, wow. And matzah. matzah is one of those things where if you're doing it by strict religious rituals or rules, it has to be within eight minutes or some sort of minutes before between the time the water hits the flour and the time mm-hmm, it comes mm-hmm. out of the oven. And he had all of these kids from ages kindergarten through fifth grade making their own matzah in this oven he had parked out in front of the synagogue. Um, so what's the yeah. best deli in town? The best deli in town? Probably Kenny and Zook's. Kenny and Zook's, where oh, is yeah. that? It is on Stark and like 10th, 11th. Stark it and is, 10th, yeah, 11th. Yeah, 10th or 11th. It is amazing. Is it 11th? Is- 13th. 13th? Ah, yeah, just Ace Hotel. Right, yeah. right over there. Ace, Ace yeah. Hotel? Yeah. Right. Oh, by the Ace Hotel. So it's, it's a classic place, right? It is not a classic deli. It is oh, It is a Portland's, Portland sustainable food twist on the classic New York deli. And See, so, because I've known people but, from but New York yeah. who are really, I, really did, crazy did, did, about did, did, their delis. And I am. Yeah. I just want to have the corned beef is. Yeah. Yeah. The corned beef is what, what Ken Gordon does. He's one of the two principals. He's the Ken in Kenny and Zooks. Mm-hmm. He buys the the organic, sustainable Painted Hills beef. Hello, there Painted Hills. And then turns that into the pastrami uh-huh. and uh-huh. hand slices it. He doesn't machine slice it and then piles it on the sandwiches, which are enormous. I mean, they're uh, going to cost you I need because he's using good ingredients to do mm-hmm. this. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. I know, for example, the um, the cheesecake that they make is with this Jenna Marie organic, sustainable Northwest provider, mm-hmm. you know, cream cheese. They don't cheese. happen to be open at midnight, do they? They have actually reduced their hours recently um, to try to... You know, make things work a little bit more from a financial perspective. They used to be open really late at night. I don't know night. what it is about this town, but yeah. it seems like a good deli, like a good New York. Yeah. I mean, just can't seem to. You know, when I was living in, you know, back behind the park blocks off mm-hmm. of PSU, right there off the campus, and there, there still was a corn blots there on uh, Broadway across from the Schnitzer. Oh, you know? yeah, that was there. That, yeah. that shut down right before I got to town. Yeah, it, okay. it, it shut down. Right. Like, moved there. We had one winter where it just dumped snow all over downtown Portland. Right. Walked over there, had the matzo ball soup and the whole thing. It was wonderful. I mean, the, you know, they had the whole thing, and it was it seemed like it was successful. It seems like they'd open and then shut down. Right. And then I always the just went to like the corn bats up on Twenty Third. So yeah, no, yeah, no, no. It was the same. No it was Twenty Third and Broadway, and then you know they probably raised the rent or something like that. Who knows? Yeah. But it seems like there's never really a, a sustainable. Well, I think that you like would that. find any ethnic group in Portland who firmly believes that they're underrepresented mm-hmm. and so the people who really want the delis are going to say there aren't enough delis or the people who want the, this kind yeah. of food there's not enough this or that or the other I will assert um, that I make the best matzo ball soup 
There you around. go. There you go. I and think she just offered to make me some matzo ball soup. I did. Of course. <laughs> I did. And I'm not Jewish. There you go. No, you married Jewish. I did. Yeah. My children are what we lovingly refer to as cashews. Uh-huh. <laughs> they refer to themselves as cashews. Mm-hmm. Um, in my office, when I want to get off for a, like Rosh Hashanah or Yom Kippur, I call myself the pseudo Jew. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the reality is, you that take it when you can get it. That's the thing. You take the vacation. I am the parent who is paying the synagogue membership. Yeah. Who is mm-hmm. teaching the classes? Who is not yet but Jewish herself? May I point out <laughs> yeah. that mm-hmm. that being Jewish is passed on through the mother. Uh-huh. I, in some okay, if you are, we belong to we belong to the re- Reconstructionist it's getting branch of Judaism. Reconstructionist, yes, that was the Lincoln Jewish branch, right? It's <laughs> the it's the it's the earthy crunchy hippie. I think I read hippie. about this in in in. in High school, right? It's, Lincoln was a Reconstructionist Jewish. Uh, yeah. It's the branch of Judaism that will take yeah. the non-Jewish parent and still accept them as a synagogue member. Oh, yeah, that's they so sweet. accepted me. That is cool. Yeah, I know. Um, Did you convert? I have not yet. Oh, it is on the list of things to do. Wow. Yeah. So, what were you raised? <laughs> Make oh, Catholic. Some matzo ball Catholic. Soup. Uh, Catholic. Yeah, yeah. Drink a bottle of gin. Yeah. Hit yeah. some restaurants. Convert to Judaism. Judaism. Yeah. Build out our PDX. All yeah. that fun stuff. Fantastic. You know? Wow. But it's it's Hit on the list. Blog on it, Friday night. My children have informed me that I must do this. Really? Aww. Yes. But they they identify with the the. the mm-hmm. yeah. They are as we speak on a plane on the right. way to Israel. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, I had a girlfriend whose yeah. and brother-in-law was a had the, the, exactly the same thing. It was yeah. Jewish Catholic mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. You had a girlfriend? Just like, yeah, this was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so are you very religious? No. <laughs> <laughs> I Although, just want to... We are religious. show of hands in the studio audience. Who's a very religious... Oh, wait, no. my hand should not be yeah. up. Here's the thing. I'm just know. wondering who's very we religious. We are religious only in the ways that might mess with their children, the kids' minds. Right. Um, in that, I am the parent who was raised as a Christian, and in my household, we do not celebrate Christmas. Hmm. Their father, who was raised Jewish, is still Jewish, mm-hmm. go to my ex's house my kids go to my ex's house to celebrate Christmas. Wow. So he celebrates Christmas and you do not? I do not. And the, we keep joking with each other that this is all so that we can guarantee that future psychiatrists and psychologists will be gainfully employed trying to, to repair the damage that we've created for our poor children. We celebrate this holiday. I think it's logical. Yeah. I think it's completely Spock logical. It's like Christ yeah. was a Jew, so hey, it works, right? We celebrate yeah. this holiday where there's a tree and there's like 16 Kabillion Jillion presents. Heathen. I am a heathen. If only people would let me raise my child as a heathen, things would be great. No. Why is that a problem? No one lets me raise my because she, she wants, you know, because Santa Claus. Yeah. And Jesus Christ and the whole bloody Jesus cross. Thing. Wow! <laughs> After hours has come. Welcome to this. Welcome to this week in religion. Rick Trosi, religion. So Where do you stand? I How do you celebrate the holidays? I am so sorry to have derailed the conversation in this way. It's I always thought it was funny. That's you know? the point of After I think hours. I think Rick exactly. has hung up on us. I think exactly. Rick is scared of us now. Do I'm still of- here. I just don't really have anything to add exactly yeah. i'll be staying out of this okay rick how about politics where do you stand i do like how you keep pulling me back in though exactly. i like to hear my voice oh hey hi. hey you know what to be fair we've mentioned you less on this show than we did on a show a few Criminy. weeks ago so i know and i'm I have to admit i'm slightly disappointed at that but that's okay how many let's I'm, see hold on we're working rick, on rick, 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 hey, rick, hey, rick hey rick hey there we go rick, 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 rick. Okay. Woo! Um, so you're going out, having a good time. Going to Geno's in our neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. And you, well, and uh, so check out that Greek restaurant. I will. Definitely. Thank you very Everybody, much. Everybody, I want to talk I about. Like it. Is it Asena? Is that the, the place? That's the new place, which used to be. It used to be. And now we Asagios. don't. Asagios. Asagios. So everyone okay. kind of knew Asagios. Does anyone know where Asagios? Yeah. So. Were Asena? I had. Asena. 
I'm going to spread rumor and innuendo. I thought that I'd heard that the chef at Asana had already left. Oh, I don't know. For my yeah. birthday in yeah. March, Dr. Normal took me to Asana and we had the tasting meal, which is the chef's fun. choice tasting. And it was fantastic. We've never eaten there and ordered off the menu. Okay. We've just eaten there and had the it was tasting like meal. like oysters and quail eggs and all sorts of interesting things. It was really well done. So. But, you know, there was bacon wrapped around stuff, so I was happy. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm still thinking about bacon tater tots. I don't know what that's going to be on Monday. Telling you the bacon ice cream thing bacon works really tater well. Tots. Yeah. So what else is going on? What else uh, What else is, is fascinating you this week? Uh, there's the whole kid-free thing. Which yeah, yeah, we got I that. Live. Um... I'm drawing a blank. I'm totally drawing a blank. Let's Maybe Rick the, has a question. Are there any questions from the chat room? Or there from, we go. Or from the Rick? Yeah. Oh, from the Rick. The Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. The Rick? Now he's really now? sorry he skyped uh, I thought you guys got me on here for the Orb blog. What the hell we is this? The Rick We did get him on here thing? for the Orb blogs, okay. but now we have him, so we have to keep him. Exactly. He's like one of those cute little kittens. You don't like oh, have it come Jesus. over and then kick it out. Please stop. Are we going to have to high-five him now like the Todd on his girls? <laughs> silicone floor spot. Oh. oh, cool. Oh, wow. That was nicely coordinated, just, ladies. Hey, Rick, we just came up with the silicone floor hand jive. We did. Oh, nice. It's true. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys can hear. Um, Use it at your the, next the beer and blog, the silicone forest high hand jive. All it takes is three high So jives. I want to ask Rick stuff. Oh, I just want to say something. What? In a world where people oh. write blogs... Not for a living. <laughs> one man, one woman, write a blog. I, you know, I had a whole thing. I was going to do a whole tribute, but we do have to say that Don LaFontaine passed away guy. this week. The mm. movie voice guy. Oh. And we're all really sad. Rest in peace. Yeah. Great guy. Yeah. And great voice. Well, what oh. do you really know? I mean, oh. great voice. We can say great voice. You don't know him personally. That's he true. Was a great he was. Man. You should, yeah. He's done a lot of interviews. Yeah. Phenomenal. I, I want to say something funny here, but he passed sure, away. So. Right. And I have a total change of subject. Okay. Wait, wait. You know, I was going to ask Rick something. Oh, no, no, no. Let her do the no, change of subject. This is I my little change, change of subject. Right. It's a little call out for those of you on Twitter. Yes. For wait, those of you Twitter? who Twitter. What's Twitter? Who either follow. In a world where you Twitter. <laughs> or can just send a you, message to Jason Grigsby. Happy Otherwise known as Happy birthday to you. Ooh, that was nice. Happy birthday. Yes. To you. Grigsby is known as Griggs on Happy Twitter. That's G R I G S. Please send him a message wishing him a happy 40th happy birthday. Happy 40th to you. In a world where a man on Twitter <laughs> named at Griggs turns 40. <laughs> Send him wishes <laughs> this fall. So if you're on Twitter, I'm if working you're listening on it. I'm working right it. now, That's if you're live, really nice. If you're live right now, you need to tweet yes. at Griggs G R I G S. No G S G G R I G S. Happy 40th, 40th birthday. birthday. Yeah. Tell him that right. Strange Love Live sent you. Mm-hmm. That's right. Nah. Tell him strange. Okay, fine. Love tell him Betsy Wims and you. Mm, no, we were trying to do this. You know. Oh, don't tell him anything. <laughs> no, just, just tell. Just mess with his mind, don't please. Thank don't you very tell much. Him happy don't tell him a thing. <laughs> so, I was going to ask Rick something, because I think did we have you on the show before you did Lunch Two Point Oh, Rick? Um, I can't remember. I think we'll we be, did. I think it was before, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was. So how was that for you? How was uh, not the show, the, the villain? <laughs> so, so how bone, was that for you? Bone chilling, <laughs> terrifying. I don't, you know, um, it was uh, really humbling and um, just, uh, I don't know, I'm still kind of speechless about the whole thing. Like it was amazing to have 200 people show up to a lunch 2.0. And, to eat your food. Um, to eat really, really good food from uh, from oh, Nicholas yeah. when it yeah. when it finally showed up, and uh, yeah, I mean that was just uh, I'm uh, yeah. There you go. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. Is I, uh, go ahead. 
No, I think everyone in this room was there. I'm yeah, and, yeah, we were. I, mean, we yeah, were. I, I think mm -hmm. the I think the most interesting thing about that event and what I really had hoped would happen did happen, where there were a lot of people who that Verso uh, threw her glasses in the hummus. That's what. <laughs> happened. Well, and there was something about isn't there something about Verso and Cammy dated the same guy in high school or something? Oh God, yeah. Hi, Austin. <laughs> Yes. I mean, that was an important part of the event for me. Yeah, yeah that was really important. But, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> I think the writing on the silicon florist needs to kind of take was, a turn, you know? I mean, I you're, you're, you're really getting good, in, good inside information, it you know? It was amazing. Literally amazing. I was gobsmacked. Yeah. <laughs> Who was it? Somebody, when we were at, um, it might have been Jason Harris, I can't remember, but when we were up at Gnome Decks, there was some other, you know, random Portland stuff going on, and we were trying to decide, you know, there's the 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 Silicon Valley kind of gossip rag valley wag. Right. Yeah. Right. We, we need our own maybe, valley wag. Yeah. We were no, thinking maybe we need we uh, Willam, my, Willam no. valley wag. Did you see the Chemic House and Verso totally slept with the same no, no, guy? No. <laughs> And it's all Gawker Media, too, which is like an yeah. awesome property, right? Right. <laughs> There's other Gawker pro properties that I've visited. Okay, anyway, you were saying, Rick? <clears throat> oh, no, we were just we were just toying with the idea of maybe we needed a Willamette Valley wag. There we and go. And that, that, you know, that would be our little gossip rag for us to get all our snark out. But I think the Willamette Valley wag would be a little bit too earthy, crunchy, and sustainable. And, and nicer. Oh, I don't want it to not be nice. nicer. No, I'm thinking of like a cross between the mercury and yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 We have a comment from the studio audience. Uh oh. I'm scared. Verso? No, it'd be totally awesome. We could mash up Shazow mm -hmm. with it and do Gawker Stalker, but here. Ooh, Gawker Stalker. Go. Oh my God, I saw Don P at Urban Grind. <laughs> don't be, don't be. That See? happens on Twitter and. Dump, dump. I know. All the time, but all the it time, could be. So. Instead, it could be like, you know, Portland Twitterati sightings like all over town. The way they do the Gawker Stalker Report. We could do that. Interesting. Like, like when we were walking down to get the tickets to Widen and Kennedy for Lunch 2.0, and all of a sudden people started screaming, It can be chaos! And just like, it was like Brom riding by on his bike with, with Don P, I think. With Don P. My daughter found that incredible. It's like we're like disturbing. looking around, people are <laughs> screaming. It's like, what? We are. We're walking down the street, oh, and all of a sudden we hear me. it's scary yeah. chaos. And my daughter's like, "Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Why are you yelling at totally, my Totally, totally reminds me. I was in an article in the Portland Tribune a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and it was talking about the fact that I was blogging for a cause. And at the time, I was writing about school issues in Portland. Mm -hmm. And they took they followed, They had a photographer follow me and my kids. And they were talking about what I was doing online. Paparazzi. And they picked the world's worst photograph of me to put on the front page of the newspaper. And it was like, she has a loud voice for causes. And I looked like I was screaming at somebody. And it was <laughs> the worst. <laughs> Fast forward a week, or a, half, a week and a half later, and I'm in a wine bar in northeast Portland. And I'm talking to the guy who owns the place. And I'm having a glass of wine. And at the end of the, the evening, he says, oh, I'm so-and-so, and nice to meet you. Who are you again? I said, Betsy. And he said, the blogger Betsy? <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> shit. And it turns out he'd seen me in the Tribune, and he'd recognized me from this horrible photo of me, looking like I'm screaming like I'm on Jerry Springer or something. <laughs> like, oh. This is going to come back and that haunt never me. happens in the Tribune. There's eh. never like that. <laughs> so, yeah. And I'm still trying to live that down. Speaking of photographers who yes. photography mm -hmm. and take pictures of things, does Aaron Hockley ever put a picture of anyone up that's not totally flattering? Not to my knowledge. Very good. Very nice. I have to give mad props to Aaron because I've seen a couple of photos of myself up on Flickr that are like, oh, oh. Why do I look like I'm eight months pregnant? Because hmm. I'm not. Okay. However, Aaron Hockley has never put a photo of anyone up. Every photo I've ever seen that Aaron Hockley put up of someone I know was just like, damn, they look good. That's nice. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Kelly. They were all pictures Aaron had taken. I think it was just. Did you give him credit? No, I think it was just a picture of you. I oh, was it? Because, like, I looked really cute and girly, and let's be honest, I'm kind of a dork. You look and... super, super hot. 
Your like, hair was down like it is straight like now. Like, I was checking me out. Ow. Yeah, you looked hot in that picture. <laughs> the pictures of, of Miss Burroughs and I were pictures that Miss Burroughs and I took of each other and or that my daughter took of us. <laughs> Next time I have one request. Yes. Invite some, you know, more women to Camp Naughty and then invite the silicon florist. Rick, <laughs> would you like to come to Camp Naughty next time? I don't think your wife is going to let you. I was going to say, that uh, question might be bring better, her. better aimed yeah. at Rick's wife. Bring her. <laughs> have her come too. Does she have a blog? I just, just leave the kids here at the house. Yeah, uh, by themselves. That's what I do yeah. when I go out. Yeah, just leave food on the counter like you do for cats. And you'll oh, be yeah. Fine. No, that's what you do with kids. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, as a parent, you just, it's, here's the bowl, here's the water. Just, because because keep okay. in mind. <laughs> right? Am I right? Rick? That 10 yeah. years from now, they're going to think you're incredibly stupid and incompetent. <laughs> it's, it's and true. you might as well get your payback now. Ahead of time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Good call. Yeah. Child services. Visit us tomorrow. <laughs> so, um, go around the table. Anybody got anything else? Does anyone have anything? Studio audience. <laughs> Media chick is chewing into the microphone. I don't think we need yes. to let her have the microphone. No. Oh. You done? <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. She's finishing her drink. It's been there, a long week. How there would be of, more beverage if Cammy had not contributed to the emptiness of the glass. It's been a long, and how long much of the week. twelve bridges gin will I be taking home? I think Cammy the answer is zero. Probably zero. Yeah. You may is have donated anything? it to the cause. The I cause being have. cause strange love needed gin. And I am more cause than being strange love happy. now has soft, soft mm-hmm. velvety walls. More than happy to do so. Here's you know, good things for strange love. Great. Thank you. Well, Rick, do you have anything to say? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> I think it's over. Please Still kind of let, let me get off the show. Please <laughs> let me stop uh, no. Thank you for, I mean, thanks for letting me kind of No, thank you for joining us. We were yeah. happy to have you come thanks. on. More than happy, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> what? How, how is it that every time we have Rick on, it turns into like, Something naughty. I don't know. Poor Rick. So, so, anything, yeah, well, yeah, we, we already talked about the food and the enjoy. naughty. The food and the naughty and the kid-free week and the, you know, RPDX, which, R- again, RPDX.net. Net. It is a total Woo! labor of love for me. I love what, what's happening there. I want to continue to push it out. It's, I wake up and the first thing I do is run. Before I even go to the bathroom, I'm checking the computer to see what's <laughs> happening on you know what? Yeah. While you were here on the show, there was yeah. at least one post that went up on RP, RPX. I checked. Really? I oh, my. Wow. Yeah, we just, we got it rocking. We want to see everybody, cool. you know, having fun, so. All right, well, yeah. I'm going to, yes. I have a question for Oh, Betsy of the Insider Restaurant Knowledge. <laughs> uh, yes, Mr. Fishbones yes. is on the prowl. Hi, Mr. Fishbones. Yeah, like he's listening. Um, oh, no. He's never going to listen. <laughs> ever. You'll have to invite him on the show. No, I'm scary. I have tattoos. I don't think he'll come on. Oh, no, that'll be fun. Cause, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Make that bastard squirm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's my man. He's mine, all mine. Um, <laughs> he's on the lookout for good Italian food that does not cost an arm and a leg. Maybe an arm would be okay. Or a leg. But Yeah, or maybe a leg. But uh, he's had a very hard time trying to find some place, A, that, it, that seems to be reasonably consistent, mm-hmm. and B, um, preferably, uh, although I doubt this is likely, not in the pearl. So. Okay. Um, Any suggestion you have, I'm happy to take home with me. Sure. First of all, there's the chain that started off that's relatively reasonable, pli- reasonably priced, and it's the Pastini. Yes. And it's all over. I mean, I know they've got one up by me in Northeast. They've got one. And it's going to be serviceable Italian. It's not going to knock your socks out off, but it's not going to be disappointing or be, you know, up and down. And it's going to be relatively reasonably priced. And that's my recommendation right off the top of my head. Okay. I, I do know that there are some Italian restaurants that have been up and down from a consistency factor, so I won't point you to any of those. Another one that I love that's in Northwest 
that is not in the Chichi Pearl District Northwest is just a pasta. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people talk about that one. And I've been there a few times. Oh, God, it's just crowded. A pasta. It is what nineteenth, and it's north of Lovejoy. Uh, um, it's it's off of Overton. I used to yeah, work a block okay. or two from there. Yeah, lunch was good. That's the one that I would, if you want something that's going to be solid each and every time, not going to cost you an arm and a leg, not going to be filled full of the beautiful people. It'll be crowded. And it's one of those places where you walk in and you order at the counter and you get your number and then they bring the food to you, but it's good stuff. They're ravioli. Yeah. Oh my God. And they've got the standard menu and then they've got specials that they offer now and then. That's where I would recommend it. Okay. Um, Finally, my daughter loves the Italian joint on Hawthorne, Southeast Hawthorne. It's a a little bit more pricey. She likes the fact that she can sit at the counter and she can get an Italian soda made for her. That's pretty Take awesome. that recommendation mm. for what mm-hmm. that's worth. That is pretty awesome. Yeah. Is it called Italian Joint? Or is it's it called The Italian Joint. The Italian yeah. Joint. Okay. Yeah. For those curious about Just a Pasta, it's 19th and Petty Grove. Oh, hey. And there's the yep. woman with the laptop. Passed over to yeah. Yay, laptop. Mm-hmm. Yes. There you go. Yay, okay. Cami Cass's shiny, lickable, new MacBook My shiny, lickable, new MacBook. And I think, MacBook shiny, yeah. new and MacBook. I think that, uh, and Rick, you'd probably chime in and say uh, Geno's as well. Yeah, yeah, I would recommend. They're very affordable, but as you as you said, a, a tad slow. So um, if you got some time, they're great. If you're more patient, that's a good than thing to are. know. All right. Yeah. Well, it's been so lovely to have Betsy Wim and Rick Tarosi join us for After Hours, and our lovely studio audience, Verso and Media Chick. Yay us! Woo! Thank you, ladies. Doctor Normal and I thank all of you for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thank you, Betsy. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Fun. Thank you. Good night, everybody.